slaves. Garvey said it real. He said, if we will survive, then it must be done through our own effort, through our own energy. And he told us to think for ourselves. These are some of the principles that he stood for. And these are some of the things that he did. These are the things that we must honor through our own actions. If we want to truly honor Garvey, then we must honor him through what we do. If we want to keep him alive, then we must do it through organizing for African power. Garvey was hard on us, as I said before, because he loved us. He wanted us to be the best that we can be. He always confronted the enemies of Africa. He always confronted and fought against white supremacy and European world domination. He fought against anyone who wanted to colonize our people. And even while he fought our enemies, he focused his attention on us, his people, his race that he loved. He put his energies into organizing us because his objective was African sovereignty. And we must become very familiar with that concept because that is the concept of 2012 and beyond. That is the concept for African people. Garvey knew that in order to be a sovereign people, we must be responsible to and for each other. Sovereignty, self-governance, self-determination. He wanted most of all for the African race, the black race, to be self-governing and to have sovereignty, to be sovereign, to be a sovereign people. The African worldview teaches us the supreme and fundamental value of reciprocity. That means what you give is what you get. That means when you get something that you give back. That is giving and receiving reciprocity. Now that's very important for us, spiritually, as a people. So I want you to think very carefully about this. 125 years after the birth of Marcus Garvey, maybe even a, a century after he gave us what he gave us, after his work began. After he sacrificed so much for our salvation, I ask you the question, what have we given him? What have we given back? Are we following the principles that he laid out for us? He gave us a vision of ourselves as a sovereign people with an ancient glory restored. The vision of a powerful empire in the motherland which would protect all Africans all over the world. Have we betrayed that vision? We must define progress not an imitation of Europe. It's not how many cars that we have. It's not those material things. But we must define progress in our own terms. The vision that Garvey has given us. If we define, and this may be hard for you, for me, for us, for us, We have not progressed. We have gone backwards. Garvey was way ahead of us. We have gone backwards since he was here in the physical. And we must ask ourselves, are we letting him down? I want to share with you very quickly a concept we call the promise, which was given to me by my brother in New York, Amara. And the concept is that our ancestors, when we were in the motherland, and the oppressors, the, the enemies, came and snatched us out of Africa, and indeed separated us cruelly, parents from children, husbands from wives, the people from 
from the elders, when they were doing that, that we looked into each other's eyes, and we made a promise, and the promise was that we would reconnect with each other, and that we would build a powerful people that would never let that happen again. That's the promise that we made. And so, we have to ask ourselves, we are now reborn Africans because that's the ancestral concept, is that we have been reborn. We are ourselves reborn. We are ancestors reborn. So the question is, are we fulfilling the promise that we made? Garvey knew that we were African. And that took him beyond, listen carefully, it took him beyond Brazil, beyond Panama, beyond Harlem, and Mississippi, and Cuba, beyond even Jamaica. These are locations, doorways to the citizenship, citizenship in the Pan-African world order. That is all they are. We must think beyond these small boundaries. We must always see ourselves as centered in Africa. Dr. John Henry Clark said that we are a world people. We cannot restrict ourselves to these accidental if we do, we get confused. We find Jamaicans in 1900 fighting against Ya Asantawa. How many people know that? We find now, in 2012, Americans call themselves Americans who are black should be African people, but helping to build a U.S. military presence in Africa. That's what happens if we don't think of ourselves as Africans. In coming here from the airport to the hotel, the driver stopped, and he says, I have to show you this, very proudly. This is the first place that Columbus came. And so there is a part of a ship, and there's uh, some crosses and some plaques and things. And I couldn't believe that we would be honoring and celebrating Columbus, who was really like a gateway to our enslavement in this part of the world. Yes, Garvey, we must raise up. The truth about Christopher Columbus must be taught to our children from an African-centered perspective. What did Garvey give us? He gave us a black bridge for African world revolution, as Dr. Clark calls it, and for African world government. All Africans in this part of the world are prisoners of war, you know. We were brought here as enslaved people. We are all prisoners of war. There is another kind of prisoner. And that is a political prisoner. And Garvey was perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps the first political prisoner of which we must remember those that we have, like, like Mumia and Mutula Shakur. And these other brothers and sisters who were imprisoned because they fought for us. Garvey was charged with lies, trumped up charges, because of his success in working with us. This he did for us. He sacrificed for us. What will we give to him? What sacrifices will we make for our people? How 